Hey guys, here to do a review for Batman v Superman. Right off the bat, this is a uh, spoilery review. So if you have not seen it, uh, do not watch this. Um, however, uh, I will be vague for the first part of it and I will let you know when I get into spoilery territory. Um, so first things first I really enjoyed the movie um, I thought it was great I mean I really really did it's I really enjoyed myself with this movie now I didn't enjoy myself like I enjoyed myself in, Dare, er, in Deadpool but it was what it was it was very much a Zack Snyder film. And if you go into it with that mindset, I think you will enjoy it if you haven't seen it. Um, go into it with open-mindedness. Block out everyone. You know, if you continue to watch this video... To the end, block out what I say, block out what everybody else says. Go into this thing completely blank. No expectations, knowing nothing. And I think you'll enjoy it. Now with that said, here's where, here's where the spoilery stuff comes in. So, before I saw Batman and Superman, I watched three or four spoiler reviews. Um... And maybe two or three non-spoiler reviews. So about five, maybe six. I might be missing one. But about five or six reviews before I actually got a chance to see the movie. Uh, because I'm one of those types where there's no such thing as spoilers to me. Um, you know, now, when it comes to things like big event movies, you know, like The Force Awakens was last year. That kind of stuff is different, you know? Like, I would have killed anyone who spoiled Star Wars for me. But that's a little bit different. But just in general, you cannot spoil a movie for me. Um, if, if I'm going to enjoy it, I'm going to enjoy it no matter what. Um, so I wasn't really worried about that going into it. it. For me, my worry was just whether or not it was going to be a good movie or not. Um, and I think it was. I really, really do. I walked out of this movie absolutely thrilled to death. I love the beginning of the movie. And there's a train. Awesome. The train's still going. I don't know if you can hear it as much as I can. I'm just going to keep on going. Um... But I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. I really enjoyed Ben Affleck's portrayal of Batman. Uh, I love the way they set him up at the beginning of the movie with being there when the end fight of Man of Steel happens. And I actually really wanted to watch Man of Steel before um, going into this, but I, I didn't get a chance with life. Uh, life happens. Um, but... Um, and just so you know before I keep on going, because this does have a big factor on how much you will enjoy this movie, I think, is I was a big Man of Steel fan. Uh, the one thing that I tell everyone is I hate Superman. I hate Superman. Man of Steel made me like Superman again. It gave him a realness. It made him grittier and darker. And I like that. I don't like the Boy Scout, Scout type Superman. I don't. I don't like it. He, he. To me, he's not a superhero. He's an alien from another planet that comes to Earth, and that's it. Now, yeah, I know that kind of stuff happens in, in a lot of different superhero stories, so you may say, well, it's not really fair to just pin Superman to that. But he's also Superman, and he's been around forever, and everybody knows who he is. So with those two things combined, it really works against the character for me. So Man of Steel really put him back on track for me. 
Um, so I was really excited for this to see if my love for the character would continue. Um, because I really want it to, you know. I, you know, I, I never go into anything going, I want to hate you, you know. No. Um, but I really enjoyed Ben Affleck's Batman. You know, now before going into this, Christian Bale was my bro, man. He is Bruce Wayne and Batman to me. Uh, I'm a huge Nolanite. I'm a Nolan fanboy to the core. I love all of his movies, but especially the Dark Knight trilogy. So I was really worried about this portrayal of Batman, especially too because I'm not familiar with the Frank Miller, The Dark Knight Returns. I never got around to you know watching the cartoon or reading the, the you know the graphic novel. So eh, um, but I really liked it. I loved the older grittier i've been doing this for a long time my methods have changed as time has progressed i loved it really really loved it um you know i think it just goes to show to the, the kind of person that ben affleck is and the kind of actor the kind of storyteller he is he knows how to work a good character and by proxy i gotta say i really enjoyed jeremy irons as alfred as well um they worked really really well together um Pacing, uh, the pacing of the movie. Um, you know, I watched a bunch of reviews of people talking about how they felt like this movie jumped from one thing to another instead of staying with something for a good enough time and all that kind of jazz. I 100% disagree with that. Um, I do think maybe the script was kind of jumbled. I do got I did get that sense, but I don't think it came off as much as you think it did. At least it didn't for me. Uh, there were definitely a few things here or there that I didn't like. I mean, this is not a perfect movie, but I don't think it was as bad as everybody was saying. It's to me, this is what I equated it to. The pacing of this movie is equal to Inception, Nolan's Inception. If you have not seen it, you should. But it's like that. It's, um, there's narration over scenes. Sometimes they're connected. Sometimes they're not. It's always progressing. It's always moving along. You really have to be paying attention. If you get up out of your seat and you leave, or you're not paying close enough attention, you're going to get lost. And that's how, I would say, the first half of this movie, maybe even a little bit more, was. It was that way. It, the movie just kept going and going and going and going and going. And you really had to be in it, you know, and focused on it. Um, let me tell you, this movie is two hours and 30 minutes long. And I never felt it the entire time at all. And let me tell you, I'm a Lord of the Rings f fan as well. I'm an extended version purist, all right? Those movies drag, and I'm a fan of them. This movie did not drag at all. There is no part in this movie where it drags. It just doesn't. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is Gal Gadot, or Gal Gadot. I love her as Wonder Woman. Yeah, she's only got a handful of a, a handful of speaking parts, but I have big faith in what Warner Brothers is going to do with the Wonder Woman movie. I'm actually really excited. Um, and again, Wonder Woman is a character that I didn't really know. I I don't know much about her. The most I know about her is. Um, when I was, I don't remember whether I was in middle school or in high school when it came on, but the Justice League series that was on Cartoon Network for a while. That's my only knowledge of her at all. Like, at all. So, um, I'm excited. I'm excited for her. My, one of my nitpicks in this movie, though... And I'm going to talk about it now because I'm talking about her, is the way we find out about the Justice League, um, because I do agree with the sense that because th this is this is how it happens, 
and it's so strange is they set up the fight between Batman v Superman and Superman and then they cut to something different. Now that is a point where in a different way the pacing is bad because it takes you completely out of the element. It's like going from hot water to cold water like that. It's like I was waiting for Superman to fly off and then you see him bounce down in front of Super or in front of Batman. That didn't happen. I didn't like that. It took me out of the moment. I'm getting geared up. Oh, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, let's go. Oh. Okay. Interesting. You know, and even with knowing that it happens, because every review that I watched talked about this moment, I got to say, even with knowing that it's going to happen, it still does not take that feeling away. I have to agree with everyone that said that. It really does take you out of the moment. With that said, I really did like what we find out. Um, The Aquaman scene was my favorite. And then Flash and then Cyborg. I thought Cyborg was pitiful. They could have done that better. Because I I really... I do remember back on the Cartoon Network show Cyborg being one of my favorite things about the show. So I really hated seeing how they kind of treated him for his sneak peek but but I loved the flash moments even where you know the flash is talking to Bruce and his dream uh you know I I, I loved it um but yeah um but the, yeah the the hey let's plant this random scene right in the middle of Superman and Batman fighting all right sure um Lex, uh, Jesse Eisenberg. I loved him. I liked him. I know, there's probably going to be a lot of people that want to beat me up. But I did. I, um, I was glad to have something different than the typical portrayal of Lux Luthor. Um, and this is coming from somebody who, if you were to ask me about Superman Returns, I will tell you the only redeemable thing about that movie is Kevin Spacey as Lex Luthor. Even as good as Brandon Routh was as Superman, because for the time he didn't do a, a bad job. But I still gotta say, if you were to ask me what is one good thing about that movie, It'll always be Kevin Spacey as Lex Luthor. Spacey was fantastic. But even with that said, I really like Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. The way I saw the movie and its progression and its pacing and its storytelling, Lex was the glue that held the movie together. Lex was the thing that connected everything together, and I loved it. You know, again, it goes back to that thing that I said at the beginning of the movie. You really got to be paying attention. Everything, nearly everything that Lex says, whenever he's talking to somebody, is getting you ready for the next setup and getting you ready for the next scene, depending on what's going on. It's one of those two things. It's either getting you ready for the next huge setup, build up, the next huge thing, or it's telling you something that you need to know moving forward. Um, there are only a few moments in the movie where Lex is in it, and it's just a Lex scene. The rest of the moments are hugely, hugely important to what's going on. And if, and again, if you don't pay attention to the movie in that kind of mindset or that kind of, you know, way, I could see how a lot of people don't like it. And I could see how a lot of people, you know, uh, get confused because. Again, going back to the Inception analogy, um, when I worked for the movie theater, because I used to work for a movie theater, we would have tons of people coming out of Inception. You know, for the vast majority that was coming out enjoying it, you know, let's say if we had 50 people coming out enjoying it, we probably had about 10 or 15 coming out that had no idea what what happened or, you know, what, what was this. 
and it was that and it wasn't just because of the ending it, you know it had nothing to do with that it was I walked out for popcorn I missed something it was I, it was hard to follow you know all that kind of stuff and I really think that this movie is the same thing and has similar issues now with that said I also have done research and I've been watching a lot of people talk about this movie for long before it came out and I know that there were certain screenings of the three-hour version and stuff before the movie came out I know that there were different things that happened and um, yeah you know maybe that does have some truth to it you know sorry I thought I heard something that might have had something to do with it um, I'm not saying that the three-hour version isn't even better than this that's not what I'm saying but I cannot in my right mind called this movie a bad movie now the last thing I want to nitpick before I give the score is my major complaint again just like with what I said about Superman Returns if you were to ask me what is my number one nitpick what is my number one problem with this movie is the Batman v Superman fight that's it that is it uh, now before I say that I will say I do also have to agree with um i think they were showing dibs day in the trailer kind of ruined that moment for me it should have been more exciting than it was because i knew i knew he was there but going back to the batman v superman fight um for a movie which is called batman v superman that was the worst fight well, okay, I shouldn't say that. I'll take that back. It wasn't the worst fight. That was the most... Um, it didn't live up. It didn't live up. It was cool. It was great to look at. But if they knew going into this that that was the only fight that they were going to have, there are a lot more problems that Warner Brothers needs to to worry about than anything else because you can't do that you can't have a movie called Batman v Superman and have a fight like that if they were worried about having two majorly explosive fights back to back because it was the, the Batman and Superman fight was pretty much back to back with the Doomsday fight and so if their complaint was having those like having two big fights back to back I can understand that so the way to remedy that is to have another fight between them earlier on in the movie or having two or three fights with them you know like even though this is a bad movie this is honestly what comes to mind Spider-Man 3 you know at the beginning of the movie you know um, you know Harry chases down Peter and they have a little brawl in the streets you know, he almost loses the wedding ring, all of that. They could have had a moment like that pretty early on in the movie. And if they would have done that, plus maybe something else, like another scene like that, maybe a, a, even a smaller moment than that, um, you know, maybe they could have had something where, you know, a citizen was in trouble or something, and they were both going after them, and they kind of cross paths for some reason, you know, just something small like that, it, and then we get the fight that they had in the movie, then that would have been fine, but that's my biggest complaint about this movie, was the fight between the two heroes in this movie, should have been better, now, with that said, my rating for this movie is a solid 8. Um, I saw the movie last night. I've been sitting on it for a whole day. And it's an 8. It's an 8. Um, um, that That's the score I feel the most comfortable with. Um, you know, I keep wanting to say 7.5 or 7, 7, you know, 7.75, you know... Is it an 8.5? No. So, it's an 8. It's a great movie. You'll enjoy it. 
call it for what it is. It's a popcorn flick. Um, and I guess if you want to know what I think about this too, before I go, I'll say Superman dying didn't bother me at all. At all. Um, comment down below. Tell me what you think of Batman v Superman. Um, you know, uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram. Other than that, I will see you in the next video. Peace out.